All right, in this video, we're going to look at some sigma notation questions. So first thing to realize is that that's actually a Greek capital S, and what it means is you're finding the sum of a function. So what we're basically trying to do, we got to learn the notation and realize that this could be arithmetic or it could be geometric. Some experience will be able to tell which one's which. For our example, I'm going to start with i equals 3, and we'll end with 8. So those are called index numbers. And the function we're going to deal with is 5i minus 2. So basically the bottom number is telling us where to start, and the top index number is telling us where to end. So the first thing to try to do is figure out, well, how many terms are we dealing with? And that'll give us our n value. So first of all, you know, 8 minus 3 plus 1, what we're doing is you're, you're basically counting from 3 to 8, which is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's a total of 6 terms. The reason you have to add 1 is that you're including the 3, right? 8 minus 3 is 5, but you add a 1. So next up, we're going to find the first term. We're going to use the first index number, i equals 3, plug it into our function, and we get a value of 13. Then use the next index number, i equals 4, and that will tell us that our second term is 18. And what we can see is that we're going up by 5, so our common difference is 5. And you can also just see that from looking at the function. It's the coefficient on i. So now we know all our values. We're ready to plug them into our arithmetic series formula. n is 6, a is 13, and d is 5. And it will give us a value of 153. So it might be helpful to look at what are we actually doing here. Really what we're doing is we're adding up those terms. So 13 plus 18 plus 23 and so on. You do that for six terms, going up by five each time. And if you type that into your calculator, it will add up to 153. So that's the sum of the six terms of this series. It's an arithmetic series. And notice there's six terms, but the index numbers start at 3 and end at 8. All right, now what we're going to do is take a look at the other type, which is a geometric series. So first of all, we'll write out a series. We'll start our function, 30 times a half to the i minus 1. This time we'll start at i equals 2 and end at i equals 10. So first thing to spot is that the i is up in the exponent. And if we think back to our geometric sequence formula, we can see why this is probably geometric. It's sort of like the way n is up in the exponent. So we know this is going to be geometric compared to before where i was just down in the, in the um, actual function in the same line and that was arithmetic. So we still start the same way as before. We have to figure out how many terms are there from 2 to 10. That's actually 9 terms, right? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 9 terms, top minus bottom plus 1. And then we'll find the first term. So we'll plug in i equals 2. And be careful with bed mass, and we end up with a first term of 15. We should check our second term as well, which means we'll use i equals 3. When we plug that in, we're going to get 30 times a half to the power of 2, which is going to give us 30 times a quarter. And in lowest terms, that would be 15 over 2, or you could say 7.5. So what we can tell is that we're multiplying by a half, we're dividing by 2 to go from our first term to our second term, so we found our common ratio. Now that we have our common ratio, our first term, and we know n, our number of terms, we're ready to plug them into our geometric series formula. So we'll say S9, sum of 9 terms, that's 15, so on. Be careful with brackets. And I'm going to start by using my calculator, very carefully typing in the function that I see there. And what this will give me is sort of an approximate answer, because it's going to round and give me a decimal of around 29.9. And note that if you did do it by hand without a calculator, you can know that a half to the power of 9 is um, 1 over 512. And you could do this by hand and end up with a, a nice exact value as a fraction. For the most part, we usually use a calculator and get an approximate value for the sum. And again, if we list out what we're really doing, we're going 15 plus 15 over 2 plus 15 over 4, because we're always timesing by a half to get the next term. We're doing that for 9 terms, 
If you add all those numbers up, they'll equal approximately 29.9. And again, we can see how the index numbers work with the term numbers, and we know we're ending when we get to i equals 10. And we started at i equals 2. Now, one last thing to look at is kind of looking ahead to calculus and what this means for something called an integral. So if we were to plot the term numbers versus n, it looks a little bit like a half-life graph. We're going 15 and then 7.5 and so on, 3.75, and we sort of get this decay graph. And really what we're doing by finding the sum is actually sort of the area underneath those that function. And what we say as well is that this thing converges because the function is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so it actually has a horizontal asymptote along the x-axis there. And one thing to point out as well is later on that sigma notation will be replaced with a integral, and you can find the integral of f of x. Right? Hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching.